you know, everything has to begin in imagination. The goal for this movie was really to take that um, seriously. And, you know, for, for a while, the, the script had a Picasso quote at the beginning that said, everything that you can imagine is real. Hi, I'm Marianne Redpath, head of Berlinale Generation. It is my great pleasure today to speak to graphic novelist, animator, cartoonist Dash Shaw, who is also now the director of The Amazing Crypto Zoo, an animated feature which has been selected for Generation 14 Plus. Hi, Dash. How are you? You good? good. Okay, you ready for a talk? Okay. First question for you, director of CryptoZoo. In two or three sentences, please tell me what your film is about. Um, it's about a zoo that rescues and houses mythological creatures. And as the crypto zookeepers are looking for a Baku, a legendary dream eating hybrid creature, they begin to question whether they should house these beings in the confines of a zoo or if they should remain uh, free and unknown. Crypto Zoo is just a catchy title for marketing. I mean, we think of it as more of a sanctuary than a zoo. Soon the whole world will see what we've done. It doesn't look much like a sanctuary, more like a shopping mall. Yeah. I mean, the initial funding came from Jones Inheritance, but if this place is gonna be able to sustain itself over a long term, it's gotta generate a lot of revenue. We need to be tourist friendly. It doesn't change anything about our mission. It's just not what I was expecting. Knowing that you have, uh, that to make any film today can be extremely stressful, and it is extremely stressful, it takes a long time. You need enormous strength and commitment to to carry it through, could you talk about the biggest challenges um, that you had along the way through that time and also how did you manage to stay resilient through all that? The difficulty uh, I would say was largely organizational because um, not only kind of uh, organizing assets from so many other painters um, but kind of tracking emotionally where a character is and having it match, it was just really, really like an impossible amount of things to keep into your head. So um, Jane Samborski, the uh, animation director and also were married, created a Google spreadsheet that kind of became the um, document of the movie where every single asset had um, steps where an intern could write their name if they did one step on one asset. Um, and then it became a way for Jane and I to communicate with each other so that instead of us having arguments all the time in person, I would, I could just type something into the Google sheet document. Um, so like creating and managing a, um, uh, this Google document really, really, um, saved the movie and our marriage. Um, it was the, the biggest thing on this one. Uh, Jane painted most of the cryptids, cryptids in the movie. Um, so she painted them, you know, by hand in little gouache, gouache paintings and then rigged them uh, to kind of create the, calling them puppets isn't, I think may, makes people think of something different than what they look like, but they're, uh, but they're hand painted things that are rigged on the computer. Can you remember like the initial inspiration that you had um, for the for the story or for for the making of, of CryptoZoo? I had seen an early um, unfinished Windsor McKay short called The Centaurs. Um, and all of his projects, uh, I think, are about utilizing what drawing can do that um, photography can't. So The Centaurs short uh, was like, oh, drawing as a way of depicting imaginary beings. And it's our only way to see them. And drawing is like a direct circuit to imagination. And the fact that it was unfinished was really inspiring. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, here's this great, um, you know, genius of animation. Um, and he had started this thing. It still had space for, for me to imagine what it might have been like if he had, um, you know, continued it. Uh, 
and so there was that, and then there was Jane's D and D group and wanting to write something um, that she would enjoy, like participating in, um, and maybe a few other things in there that kind of combined to equal the the, the crypto zoo script. Well, it's it's very progressive, I think. I mean, the shops are staffed with both cryptids and non cryptids working together. Maybe you'll work at one of these stores, Blaney. Wow! Oh my God. We have dolls of every confirmed cryptid. Blini, it's you. You don't think it's a little tacky? Think of it this way, a hundred dolls sold is one saved cryptid. Besides, look, he loves it. Come on. And one of the things that really hit me was this, this feeling of unfinished this in it. And I, I, I was never really sure if I'd seen the final version of the film. And I really liked that a lot. It kept keep me like guessing, is he going to do more coloring for this figure or is it just going to stay like that? And so, um, yeah, I like, I, as an audience, I, I, I like the feel that, uh, that you create. So I just wanted to give you that feedback. You know, the unfinished quality, it's like a... a CryptoZoo has that too, you know, again, about being about imagination. I feel like you need to allow space. Um, it's like the, you know, in those new, especially like a fantasy film, I feel like the kind of fantasy art that I like really allows for the viewer to kind of participate and their imagination kind of fills in the edges and it's always so much more, um, wonderful and like personal to them if you give them that space like a uh, uh the, the the designer of the yellow submarine animated movie heinz heinz eidelman i'm probably mm -hmm. mispronouncing his name but he illustrated um the lord of the rings and his illustrations are these kind of black and white crow quill drawings that are very loose and to me they're like the best version of the Lord of the Rings, because they still have that space in it where you are kind of projecting and, and rendering out the full figures, but he's giving you enough that it really activates your, your mind. We talked before about the power of the imagination or the imagination, and, and you also talked about uh, briefly about um, the act of drawing what you imagine. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think it's also an incredibly interesting aspect of your work. It's that, you know, everything has to begin in imagination. Um, an invention for this computer has to at some point start with a drawing or mm -hmm. a blueprint mm -hmm. or, you know, even how a whole society operates kind of has to begin in imagination at like a sketch stage. The goal for this movie was really to take that um, seriously. And, you know, for, for a while, the, the script had a Picasso quote at the beginning that said, everything that you can imagine is real. Um, so it's about kind of taking imagination seriously and kind of uh, uh, res respectfully and not um, thinking of it as lesser, lesser than. You must have had a had a nose for mythology, mythological creatures from all different cultures. Um, is that something which happened a long time ago, or is it something that you just came to in making this film, or or how did that happen? I always loved like uh, the Ray Harryhausen um, stop. Those are kind of my favorite um, stop motion movies. Mm -hmm. Those mythologies, and of course um reading uh greek myths in books and none of the cryptids and crypto zoo i made up they all come from unique stories that are in some way like like um um angeliki papulia who plays the gorgon she's a greek actor and she said that when she got the script and saw that it was a gorgon she was excited because she, as a child she grew up reading about all of these greek myths um so i think that uh they're still, you know, underneath our culture and they're kind of somehow informing how we're behaving these ideas about heroism and, and all of these things, you know, for, for good and bad. Mm. Um, that reminds me of something which really hit me when I watched the film, um, apart from the 
you know, the amazing style that you use in the animation um, is this idea of outsiderness, being outside and being marginalized. I think that's one of the hashtags that uh, will follow you through um, with CryptoZoo in a big way. Um, do you, did you set out to, um, to, to address being an outsider in that film? You know, the, 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 key, the key thing about, uh, as I said, the key thing about the imaginary beings is that they are imaginary. Mm -hmm. And so for me, they're symbols of imagination and the imagination from these different cultures. Um, so that, um, I think, is an important um, element that it's not, uh, because the difference between, you know, uh, these imaginary beings and actual marginalized people is that marginalized people are not imaginary. <laughs> They're very real, you know. Um, so the I I think the steps then that that draw those connections is that I'm that I'm placing the, these imaginary people inside of a very real world because I want it to be about how imagination is part of our world. I didn't want it to be like here's a fantasy world um, that has nothing to do with us. We're coming to the end of our time. I wanted to ask you the COVID, the COVID question, you know, because the COVID-19 has, uh, um, has affected um, so much in the film industry, making films, how we see films, how we view films. I wanted to know um, from you whether the pandemic um, has affected, especially in the last year, has affected um, the the finishing of CryptoZoo and um, what you expect um, to happen next with it? Um, you know, all of our artists were already working remotely and scanning their paintings and bringing it in. So, so the biggest thing that changed at the end was um, the voice records mm -hmm. and mailing the actors their microphones. So, so we went back to them and and then kind of had to get their recordings and collage them together. Um, that part was um, difficult, uh, but how it's affected kind of rolling um, the movie premiering in this time, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. And of course, I wish there wasn't a global pandemic and I wish we were all together, but um, uh, I'm, uh, you know, people watching CryptoZoo at home is, um, I, I don't feel like I missed out on any on anything. Okay, so um, just to finish off, I'd like to ask you um, what your your plans for the future are. Do you have any projects coming up that are sort of cooking away in the back of your head, or um, are at a certain stage yet, or are you just uh, thankful to have finished a, a crypto zoo and send it out into the world? I mean, I made a book called Discipline that's coming out in the United States later this year. It's a graphic novel. Um, and uh, I'd like, you know, I'd like to make another, I wanna keep keep doing this. And I, and I hope that the growth between, you know, high school sinking and crypto zoo can, can be matched in the next one that they kind of will continue to um, improve. That's the, the, the life goal. Sorry, my cat. Oh, the cat's there. I was missing the cat. Last time we talked, the cat was there. What's the name again? That's Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay. Okay. So thank you for this talk. It's been really great. I know we could uh, go on for a long time, but the format is kind of uh, uh, limited in terms of time. I look forward to meeting you up again, meeting up with you again when we uh, when we meet with the talents talk, which will be longer and more detailed. Mm -hmm. And I'd congratulate you again on getting this amazing movie done and getting this far and um, wish you all the best for its further life and also for your further journey. It's good getting into your head. I really enjoy that a lot. Thank you.